Okay, we are going to figure out how to draw a temperature profile through a wall. Actually, this could be through any um, uh, assembly, um, for any, any building assembly, but we're going to use a wall. And we're going to actually simplify things, and we're going to not include air films. So here I've drawn a, a uh, kind of a schematic of a wall profile. So inside we have the drywall, and again we're ignoring the air film here. Then we have the insulation, in this case it's five and a half inches of insulation, and then we have a half inch of sheathing on the outside. We're going to pretend that we don't have any uh, siding, we don't have any air films, we're going to ignore all of that. Um, so this is temperature over here, um, and, and we've just drawn it from zero to a hundred and we're going to say that we have an inside temperature of 70 degrees because we seem to always say that and we're going to say that we have a 20, a 20 degree outside temperature um, and that's kind of a, an average low temperature so that's, that's pretty reasonable so this profile is drawn proportional to thickness so we've got a half inch of drywall and five and a half inches of insulation cavity and then a half half inch of sheathing on the outside. But we can also describe it in terms of R values. So the drywall has an R value of about 0.5. Um, the insulation that's five and a half inches has an R value of about point, about uh, 19. And the sheathing has a, a an R value of about 0.5. Uh, these are approximations just to make it easy. So the total then is 0.5 plus 19 plus 0.5, that's 20. So it's a total of R20 through this wall. So what, in order to find the temperature of the different surfaces, in other words, we would like to know, okay, well, we know that it's going to be 70 degrees here on the outside. What's the temperature going to be like right here on the inside um, of, of, the, of the drywall? What's the temperature going to be right here on the inside of the sheathing, the, 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 the side facing the insulation. And we, because we're ignoring air films, we know what the temperature is going to be like on the outside of the sheathing. It's going to be the outside temperature, which in this case we called 20 degrees. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is understand that we already know something based on the definition of R value. So R is defined as a square foot times the temperature loss, the temperature difference over an hour divided by the number of BTUs. Okay, so a simpler way of writing that is that R is equal to delta T over Q. And part of the reason for that is because we're looking at an instantaneous loss through this, uh, um, th th through this uh, assembly. So it's an, it's an instantaneous loss, which means that we're really looking at power. And so we're looking at a square foot, and we're doing it over one hour. So we can ignore those, and we're really looking at Q as BTUs. So here is the important thing to know, that the amount of energy lost in that hour is the same throughout the entire wall. Even though the temperatures will be different through that entire assembly, the amount of energy is only the amount of energy. It hasn't, it's not changing. So we can find Q. So we know the delta T, we know that that's uh, 70 uh, degrees Fahrenheit inside minus uh, 20 degrees outside. And we know the R value because we just added that up, that's 20. So Q is going to be equal to delta T over R. Right, so we've we've re just rearranged the the variables. If R is delta T over Q, then Q is equal to delta T over R. So if we write that out as temperature inside minus temperature outside uh, divided by R, we get 70 minus 20 is 50 divided by 20. That's 2.5. So that's what Q is. So now what do we know? We know that Q is 2.5 BTUs per hour uh, per square uh, for each square foot and we're only looking at a square foot sections R is equal to 20 right the total R value we know the temperature inside now what we want to know 
is the temperature outside of each layer, okay? The temperature outside on each layer that we're interested in. So we have a formula that we can use, right? We know that Q is equal to temperature in minus temperature out divided by R. So we can rearrange those variables to put the ones we know all on one side. So the temperature inside we know is 70 minus Q times R. We, we uh, m multiply by R to get, get R on this side, so it's Q times R is, is subtracted from the temperature inside, and that's going to be the temperature outside of each layer. Now what you end up doing is you end up building yourself a table. So here's our table. We've got our inside temperature, and, here's, and here we've written the temperature over here. We have the R value of each layer, and then the cumulative R value, because we're adding the R values as we kind of go through the wall with the temperature from the inside to the outside. So we've got drywall with an R value of 0.5, and of course its cumulative R value is 0.5. And we've got insulation with an R value of 19, so the cumulative R value is 19.5. And then we have the sheathing with an R value of 0.5 and a cumulative R value of 20. And we know that we've set our, out, our inside temperature to be 70 degrees and our outside temperature to be 20 degrees. So now we can take that same equation that we just did, which is the temperature in minus Q times R is equal to the temperature out of each, outside of each layer, and we can apply that in our table to each layer. So we have 70, our inside temperature, minus 2.5, which is Q times uh, 0.5, which is the R value, the cumulative R value that we've got for that first layer of drywall. So now we know that on the outside of the drywall, or it, conversely you could think of it as the inside of the insulation, the temperature is 68.75 if you just multiply through or you know go th plug in those numbers into a calculator that's what you're going to get the next layer then we're taking we're taking a look at the insulation and we take the same thing we have 70 degrees inside minus 2.5 q is constant remember times in this case the cumulative r value that we have which is 19.5 that gives us a temperature of 21.25 then we take the sheathing, it's the same approach, except we're using cumulative R value, which is now 20, and not surprisingly, the temperature on the outside of the sheathing is 20. So this, of course, is without considering air films. This is, you know, a, a deliberately very, very simple wall with not, not very many um, uh, uh, other layers. So what if we said, well, we, we're interested in that, but we'd really like to know, well, what happens when we, you know, when we lower the temperature from 70 inside to, let's say we lower it to 60, 60 degrees. It's going to be, um, you know, when people are away, uh, we set it to 60 degrees. Um, and we leave the temperature outside at, at, at 20. Well, now we have to do this entire calculation all over again. And not, we can't just replace this inside temperature on the same thing because now Q is different. Now, instead of being 2.5, we have to calculate it as 60 minus 20. So that, um, that gives us 40, and 40 divided by 20 is 2. So now Q has to be 2. So we have to change all of those, and we make these 60. And you can see how calculating that through by hand is kind of a pain. So isn't there some simpler and better way? Wouldn't it be nice if we could test these things out really quickly? Well, there is a simpler and better way. Um, it's not necessarily as accurate, but for these, these types of temperatures that we're worried about, um, that kind of level of accuracy is, is not necessary. So what I've done here is I have drawn this same wall section Except now, because, because it's easy, I've added air films. So here's an inside air fil film. An inside air film, the drywall, the insulation, the sheathing, the 
Uh, now, now I've decided to add uh, some uh, siding and an outside air film. And each of these, instead of drawing them proportional to thickness, <clears throat> I've drawn them roughly proportional to R value. So the inside air, for, air film is 0.68, so I've, I've made it a little smaller just to be easier to draw. But the drywall really is 0.45, and I've drawn it as 0.5. Each of these squares is, is half an R value. The insulation is, again, it's, it's R19, and I've drawn it proportional to the R value. So each of those is proportional. And watch what we can do. We say, OK, inside temperature is 70 degrees. Outside temperature is 20 degrees. And we simply draw a line. It's convenient if you have a straight edge. It's also convenient if you're not holding an iPhone with one hand and trying to draw a line through it. There. So I've drawn a line. You draw a line through that, uh, the, the, through that assembly, and now you can see the temperature. So let's say we wanted to know the temperature on the inside of the, um, of the sheathing, and we've drawn our straight line. Well, now we just follow that over to the temperature on the temperature scale, which I should have labeled, and it's, two, it's uh, 25 degrees. So we, we just know that. We've, with all those calculations that we did, we just did by drawing it proportional to our value. And, it gets, and, and this time we were more accurate because we added the, um, the air films. But now let's say we had that same question. OK, it's still 20 degrees outside, but we want to lower the indoor temperature to 60 degrees. Um, or let's, let's make it even, even better, lower it to 50 degrees. So we just draw our same. Uh, we, so we draw a straight line, and we look, and it turns out that it's very difficult to see a temperature difference. It's, it's a little bit lower. It's something more like 23 degrees. Um, but remember, since temperatures are changing all the time, a level of accuracy beyond that is not necessary. If you're, if you're doing a hand calculation like this, you're trying to find a worst case scenario or an average scenario. You're not looking for, for temperatures that are changing you know, um, all the time because then you'd need some sort of program. In fact, there is one called Woofy, um, but it's very expensive and you can't have it. Um, so we can do better than that even. Let's say we wanted to say, well, OK, that's, that's pretty cold, 25 degrees. We'd like to make sure that this interior temperature was going to be higher than a condensing temperature. OK, so um, we could add some foam to the outside. So we're going to add an, an R5 right here, an R5 of foam. And then we're going to add back, um, so, so we've, we've taken away the air film and the siding, and we're going to add back the siding and the air film on the outside. Well, that now, instead of having to do a whole bunch of calculations, we say, OK, it's 70 degrees inside and 20 degrees outside. Um, let me just find my 20 degree mark here. Um, it's 20 degrees outside. I'm just going to quickly draw this line. And you see, not surprisingly, um, that the slope is a shallower slope, and that the, um, the inside of the sheathing now is at about uh, almost 35, 34 degrees Fahrenheit, if we just follow that. So it's much warmer now. So it's 34 degrees Fahrenheit. So if the temp if the temperature inside at, at that point there, at the, the the first condensing surface is um, let's call it 34 or 33 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's at that temperature, is water going to condense on that surface? What's the likelihood of water condensing? Well, to do that, we need to look at a 